Welcome to This Week in High School Sports. I'm Teresa Whipple. Steve Willits, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. I'm ready to talk about sports. Plenty of it to talk about, including a new state champion from That's the area. Right. But first, a word from our sponsor. Carrie Krause wants you to know that regardless of the real estate transaction, she is here to help you 100%. So whether it's a single family residential, multifamily, condos, vacant land, commercial property, or even a business opportunity, Carrie can assist you. And even if she can't help, she will refer you to the best person for the job. Carrie takes pride in her work ethic and will go the extra mile to be sure that your buying or selling experience is positive. So call, text, email anytime with questions or to get her working for you towards your real estate goals. Once again, thank you, Carrie Kraus. Yes, thanks, Carrie. So cheerleading, what happened over the weekend with that? Cheerleading state championships were taking place over at the University of Washington. And for the fifth time in 11 years, the Meadowdale Mavericks are state champs. Wow. Uh, we have a picture of them right there. You can see the ladies uh, celebrating after the fact. Uh, this is a Meadowdale Mavericks team that has a new head coach this year. It's uh, Julie Stacked, who's assisted by Tina Landon. And... Uh, Kind of continuing where Kimberly Berry, who was the coach the last few years, uh, left off in the Mavs get the championship. Uh, Quite a dynasty. Yeah, absolutely. Great for them. Uh, and a couple of our other teams were also down there. Mount Lake Terrace, who uh, made it to state for the third year in a row. Uh, this is a Mount Lake Terrace team who had never been to state up until 2014. And Jessica Ellersick, the coach, who was a former, she's a grad of Mount Lake Terrace, continues to do an excellent job. She uh, gets them to third in state in the non-tumbling medium division. So also want to mention that Linwood, under the guidance of Amber Torres, finished sixth in the non-tumbling small division. So three of our schools having a good time over at uh, the old Heck Edmondson Pavilion, now known as the Alaska Airlines Arena. Very good. And uh, on the wrestling front, I just want to start this out by saying that the best part about me going to the wrestling match between Edmonds Woodway and Arlington on Friday night was that I learned how to pronounce some names <laughs> that we've been mispronouncing. Some of these Edmonds Woodway warrior while. names, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But um, you had some observations about the match as well. Yeah, this was a, a match between Edmonds Woodway, who is the Wesco 3A South champions, versus Arlington, who is the Wesco 3A North champions both of which are ranked in the top five in the state. And this was a match that a lot of folks had been waiting for all season long, really, knowing that uh, these two teams were going to be as good as they are this year. And it did not disappoint, as you can attest to. You yeah. were actually there. Yeah, it was an electric crowd. That It was jammed. I don't know exactly how many people there, but let's just say safely many hundreds. You needed more um, than a couple of hands to count. Yes, okay. yes. And uh, it was just an amazing atmosphere. I, was, I really had a lot of fun. Yeah, and it was a match in which uh, Generous, uh, yeah, we now know how to pronounce Generous' yes, yes, name. Yes, that's right. I like to say Generous. Uh, he was out with a concussion, which forced a few of the Edmonds Woodway wrestlers to wrestle up a division heavier than they normally do. And the, uh, these wrestlers still did phenomenal. Uh, Mason McDaniel, who normally wrestles at the 170-pound uh, division, he had to go up to 182, where he had Ruben Crew waiting for him. Uh, Ruben is ranked number two in the state at the 182 division. And all Mason did was went out and pinned him in the first round. Uh, McDaniel, who is a Juanita transfer, who wrestled in the state championship last year at the 170 level and is one of the favorites again this year, uh, had to uh, pick up a lot of confidence as we move towards that state tournament, knowing that he can go out and, uh, and defeat a, a guy of, uh, of crew stature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Spencer Schultz, um, he, he was wrestling up as well. He's usually at 195, and he was up to 220 this he, time. He was up to 220, and we have a picture of Spencer as well right there. As he had to come from behind, he was uh, trailing Colton Farrow 6-0 to zero at one point in that match and overcame that deficit and pulled out a 10-8 to eight victory. Uh, another uh, wrestler we want to mention is uh, a, a wrestler I think we might have mispronounced a few times, Sadat Kanye, yeah. who uh, also defeated Gavin Rourke 12-7. to seven. And once again, Edmonds Woodway gets the 37-24 victory over Arlington in what is uh, what was a huge match here in Wesco. Yeah, and I need to get the other name in, which is Abrema Fate. That was a, <laughs> a, a common mispronunciation. And he came back after falling behind Will Rush 4-1 um, to one and 1-7-6. One, so congrats to all of our wrestlers. They did an amazing job. Absolutely. And in other wrestling news that we should mention, uh, Mount Lake Terrace gets a 63-10 to 10 victory over Linwood this week. Malik Terrace wraps up the regular season with their first winning season in eight years. So congratulations to the Hawks. Uh, Gene Ahn, 
uh, Pavel Olafarovsky, or we might have pronounced, mispronounced his name too, but we're trying. He's not a we Smith. We do our best. <laughs> uh, Rennie Mack, Lex Davis, and Eric Bresnan all had pins in that match. And for Linwood, a uh, nice job by Cole Anstis as he went out and pinned Chaplin Mack. Chaplin Mack is 31-5 and five this year, so a huge win for Anstis there. And a nice night for the, the Hawks and for Cole Anstis of Linwood. Other wrestling news, uh, Meadowdale defeated Shorecrest this week, 51-21. And last weekend at the Linden Invitationals, uh, 16 schools showed up. Melanie Terrace finished third. Meadowdale finished fourth. So uh, congratulations to those wrestlers as Adrian Guzman, Beck Miley, and Liam Ball all had first place finishes in their divisions for Meadowdale. Uh, Pavel, as well as Chaplin Mack, also won their divisions for Melanie Terrace. Very good. Okay. Well, and swimming was district this week? Yeah, we had the Edmonds district meet. It was all four of our schools from the Edmonds school district as well as Mount Vernon. Uh, Edmonds Woodway takes first, Meadowdale second. And just to, uh, to note a few of the individuals who, uh, who did well there and won their, their particular swimming matches. Uh, for the 200 medley relay, it was Edmonds Woodway with Joseph Livesey, Ben Palmer, Wen or Sean Winley, and Joel Hashimoto. Uh, Meadowdale, uh, Kyle Weiss, who we've mentioned a few times on this show, yeah. uh, he won the 200 freestyle, the 100 butterfly, as well as the 200 freestyle relay with a few of his teammates. And Matt Hibbler uh, won the 50 freestyle, and Matt goes to Linwood High School. Okay, good. Uh, now we've got uh, basketball, and it's funny you put this down as the title of the other Linwood basketball team because it's not the girls this time, right? We're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to uh, give a nice shout out to the Linwood boys. They came into the week having not won a single conference game all season long, and they went up against two teams that they had previously lost to this year, and they pulled out two victories. Uh, the first one was on Tuesday night. They beat Meadowdale 47-46. First time the Royals have beaten the Mavericks in basketball in over 10 years. Yeah. It was January of 2006 when they last won. So that was a huge night for Linwood. A game in which they trailed uh, they trailed by six points going into the fourth quarter. Uh, Ryan Rapanen hit a three-pointer with a minute 20 left to give them their first lead of the entire game. They lost that lead. And then Tanner Mack, who I think we have a picture of right there, mm -hmm. Tanner Mack uh, scores the winning basket with 33 seconds left. Mack had 17 points and nine rebounds in the game. So Linwood gets the victory on Tuesday. They then turn around on Friday night and they beat Shorewood by two, a, a game in which they trailed by eight points in the, in the first quarter. So Tanner Mack goes out and gets 19 points in that game. So a great job by Linwood, not only in getting the victories, but erasing two pretty large deficits. I should mention they actually trailed Meadowdale at one point by 13. Wow. So the Royals uh, showing some persistence, and they pick up a couple of victories. And believe it or not, or not uh, with those two wins, with three games to go, they're still in contention possibly for a playoff match. Wow. They'd have to have a few things break their way, but they're still in contention, as are the Meadowdale Mavericks, who are now tied with them. So we'll see how things play out for those two teams. That's very good, yeah. And, of course, Edmonds Woodway boys basketball still continues to um, impress um, yeah, really incredible. Yeah, only one game for the Warriors this week. They showed they can play some defense this time. They played a Shorewood team that they defeated 99-72 earlier this year. This time Edmonds Woodway gets held to 55 points, which is a season low for them. That's really low for them. For, yeah, they average 79 points per game. But they hold Shorewood to 42. They get the victory. A uh, little bit sloppy in the middle of the game, but Edmonds Woodway score, outscores Shorewood 14 to 4 in the first quarter and 16 to 4 in the fourth quarter, and consequently they get the 13 point win. Very good. Very Should good. also uh, mention Melly Terrace too had a, a huge night on yeah, Friday night. Uh, mm -hmm. Got a nice one against Glacier Peak. Uh, Melly Terrace trailed by nine in that game before uh, wiping out a deficit, outscoring Glacier Peak 19 to 5 in the third quarter alone. The storyline for Mount Lake Terrace was Daniel Johnson. Uh, Daniel's averaging 3.6 points per game. He scored 16 of his 20 points in that game in the second half, uh, doing a nice job to help Terrace pull away. And then Shimron Masih had 19 points and 10 rebounds, and the Hawks defeat Glacier Peak. Very good. And then the girls, um, Edmonds Woodway, they had a very exciting game. Didn't turn out exactly the way they'd hoped, though. No, this was the game that we mentioned last week might be the game of the week. And quite frankly, it really was. I, it, a game that went right down to the wire. Uh, Edmonds Woodway jumping out ahead by six in the second quarter. Shorewood comes back and goes on a 16-4 to run, and they take a six-point lead of their own. Shorewood gets that lead up to nine in the third quarter before Edmonds Woodway comes back. Uh, Missy Peterson hits a three-point shot with under a minute to go to tie the game at 50. Game goes into overtime, and unfortunately for the Warriors, Shorewood ends up defeating them 61-55. to 
and kind of puts Edmonds one way in a tough position. They're, they're tied for third place right now with Shorewood, as we do have a picture there of Adrian Poling from Edmonds Woodway, who uh, outstanding freshman that plays for the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Edmonds Woodway now is in a tie with Shorewood. Shorewood has the easier schedule coming down the stretch, so it kind of looks like Edmonds Woodway might end up finishing in fourth place. If that is the case, they're going to have to win a play-in game to get to districts, and if they win that play-in game, they would have to play Linwood in the first round. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. You mm -hmm. never know. Um, and then, of course, getting back to Linwood girls, another good game for them this week. A couple of good games for them, yeah. really. Michaela Pivik, uh, who else, right? Yeah, of Michaela course. Pivik, she, uh, on, uh, she, she also played Shorewood this week, and there she is right there playing up against uh, Meadowdale. In that Shorewood game, she scored 28 points as they beat Shorewood 62-39. They played Meadowdale also, and uh, a game that wasn't very pretty for the Mavericks. The final score was 81-18. It was 59-9 at halftime. Pivik has 25 points in that game. Kelsey Rogers has 16. Linwood remains undefeated. Well, it's going to be very interesting um, playoff-wise for some of our teams. Um, uh, not so much. We don't really know what's going to happen with, with Linwood girls. We don't know if they're going to get much competition before uh, state. But well, district championship game would be against Arlington, who's ranked oh, third in the right, state. Oh, so that's right. That's right. And they, they that, definitely are a good team. So, that could potentially yeah, be a huge showdown. That, that would happen game. on February 20th, but both teams have to win out to get there. But it's right. certainly looking good for both right now. Right. Okay. And what games do we have coming up this week that we're doing? We just have one on Friday, right? We have one game on Friday night. It's Mount Lake Terrace and Meadowdale Girls. It's going to take place over at Mount Lake Terrace High School. A, a rematch in a game that took place earlier this year in which Meadowdale won. But a chance for uh, both of those two teams who have struggled a bit to, to play one another and hopefully we'll, uh, neither one of those two teams will make the playoffs this year. So it's uh, one final chance for them to get a victory. Two teams that play awfully hard and we're looking forward to an exciting game. We do have some other games to note though for this coming week. Uh, Tuesday night, Linwood Boys play at Edmonds Woodway. Again, I, this one looks like it's a mismatch on paper, but Linwood is all of a sudden, all of a sudden on fire a little bit. Yeah. And Linwood took Edmonds Woodway right down to the wire a few weeks ago. That's right, they, they did. actually led by 15 in the first quarter yeah. in that game. So we'll see if they can maybe get a little revenge on Edmonds Woodway in that game. Mount Lake Terrace plays at Meadowdale on Friday, uh, a game that they're looking to avenge as Meadowdale came to their place and beat them 54-50 to just a few weeks ago. And uh, a Mount Lake Terrace team who's still fighting to uh, potentially get second place in the for the districts and to get a home game in the first round, they would need to have second place and they could wrap it up that night against Meadowdale. So that could be a fun game. And then Linwood hosts Glacier Peak on Friday night, the girls. And this is a Glacier Peak team who beat Linwood last year, one of their two, only two losses all season long. So you know that Glacier Peak has a lot of confidence when they play Linwood. They only lost by six earlier this year. So that could be a fun game to watch. Yeah, okay. Well, check out the soundlivesportsnetwork.com for the game that we're broadcasting this week. Um, we look forward to seeing you again next week on This Week in High School Sports.